So instead of continuing to try and hold on to this relationship or friendship that's been dead forever, let them go to make room for the people that belong in your life. Let them go because you deserve more. Let them go because you're not anybody's doormat and you literally deserve the best. Hi guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. For all of you guys that don't know me, I'm Mina. Very, very nice to meet you. Thank you for being here. I am a certified life and relationship coach for all of you guys that are new to my channel. So welcome. So today's topic that I wanted to discuss with you guys is something that's crossed my mind in the last few days when it comes down to the relationships, when it comes down to the friendships, when it comes down to really knowing yourself. And that is the topic of being able to spot the signs when someone is clearly using you as a doormat and how to go about stopping it. So let's get started. Number one, you are constantly people pleasing. So in other words, you are always putting everyone else's needs before yours. And you notice that when you don't people please, when you don't get on people's good side, when you're not going above and beyond for them each and every single time, they react to you differently. So you seeing their reaction quickly snap back to people pleasing and doing whatever you have to do to keep them happy, to keep them liking you, to keep them talking to you. It doesn't matter what you want or what you think or what makes you happy. All that matters at that point is how they feel. And these people will realize that that's your weakness. That's where we could get away with things. That's how we'll get her to bend, to do what we want to do. Because she knows damn well that if we're happy, she's happy. And she's not going to do anything to mess that up. Number two, you do favors for others without getting much or anything at all in return because you hope that it will make people like you. And when people see that, they take full advantage of it. They will know that no matter what, you'll always be willing to do it. You'll always be willing to go above and beyond without expecting anything in return. So they're looking at you as that person they could always go to that will never say no. That will never turn them down. And they don't feel in any type of way like they have to return that favor to you. Because why? Because they know you don't have that expectation for them. So when you're mixed in the wrong group of people, they will without a doubt take full advantage of your kindness. Because to them, that's a weakness. That's something they could always get away with. They will literally use you and take every single thing they possibly can until finally one day it hits you when you realize something's off, something's not right. It's not fair that I'm always giving and not getting anything back. And you finally walk. And people like that will not try to get you back. And if they do, it's not for the reason that you think. It's not because they changed. It's not because they want to be friends with you now. It's not like they want to make up for anything. It's because they want to get you back to your vulnerable state so that they could get even more from you. And when you realize it's not a two-way street, do not fall for it. Number three, you're always the first one to reach out and apologize after an argument. This is very typical when you're dealing with this type of person or people that have no care in the world for you. When someone is using you for what you could give them and for what they could get away with, these people have no care in the world about your feelings. They have no care in the world about hurting you. They have no care in the world about fixing anything. So you best believe that if something goes wrong and you guys have an argument, a disagreement, a dispute of any sort, even if they're at fault, even if they're the ones that made a mistake, even when they're wrong, don't fool yourself and think that they will reach out to you to apologize, that they will reach out to you and say, I messed up, I'm sorry, my bad. These people know that your kindness is your weakness and because of that, sooner than later, you'll reach out and apologize. You'll take the blame. You'll say that it was your fault, even though that deep down inside, you know it wasn't. But in your head, you somehow made it look like it's not even a big deal. It's just one argument. It's just one disagreement. 
So what if it was actually their fault? Not a big deal. If I bring it up, they'll probably get mad. They'll probably not want to hang out with me. They'll probably call me out on it. And I don't want that type of confrontation. I don't want that type of dispute. I don't want it to get out of hand. So I'll take the blame for this one again. Just so we could go back to the norm. Just so we could continue talking. Just so we could continue being friends. And when people see you doing that, they realize she's got no standards. She's got no boundaries. We could walk all over her. And guess what happens? They do. Number four, having to change your mind just because someone in your group disagrees with you. So when you hang out with a group of people or a person that constantly mentally uses and abuses you, they know that they have the upper hand with you. They know that whatever I say goes. She's going to do whatever she's got to do to keep me happy. So you guys are having a discussion. And let's just say you don't agree with what's being said. You don't like what's being said. You have a different opinion than what's being said. You will easily change your opinion, agree with these people or this person, nod your head like you're okay with it because you don't want to upset anybody, because you don't want to look bad, because you don't want to be the person that stands out in a negative way to anyone else. And those people that aren't meant to be in your life, those people that add no value to your life, see that. They recognize it. And they know that no matter what's said, what's done, good or bad, she's going to go along with it. She's going to agree no matter what. She'll change her mind because of us, because of me. Because if she doesn't, we'll call her out on it. She won't be part of the group. And then she'll realize she needs to make those changes. If she wants to fit in, if she wants to be part of the gang, to hang out with us, she's going to have to do what we say when we say it or what I say when I say it, period. And number five, being used as an unpaid therapist for people that don't care about your life or any of your problems. So how does this situation look like? A perfect example of this is someone completely unloading all of their trauma, all of their drama, all of their problems, all of their laundry on you with the expectation of you listening maybe even giving them advice, but they could care less about you or your problems and not have a care in the world about what's going on in your life and not even think to ask you about them. Those are the people that literally think that you have no life all of the time in the world, no issues listening to them whenever they please, Like you have nothing else going on in your life. Like you're always available to call. Like you're always available to text. Like you could just show up whenever they please, whenever they ask you to. And I totally get it. That's life. When you have a friendship, when you have a relationship, this is the stuff that happens. You guys talk about your problems. You guys talk about your issues. But this is a two-way street. That works both ways. It can't be that one person takes full advantage of it and completely ignores the other person's problems. So when that other person calls they don't pick up, they don't text back. Or when they do, it's a few hours or a few days later. And we all know that when you're dealing with something, you need your friends, you need your family, you need whoever you have by your side, by your side, available to talk, available to listen. It's not by their schedule. It's a two-way street. It's just something that you do for one another because you're friends, because you're in a relationship, because you're family. It can't just always be about that one person. But people that like to mentally use and abuse individuals will not look at it that way, will not think of the other person, will not think of the other person's feelings. To ask, how are you? How are you doing? How's everything in your life? Talk to me about what happened. Talk to me about that person. All they care about is what they can get out of it. They'll involve you, but just to listen, just for advice, just to vent, but will have no care in the world about you after that. So now what do you do when you spot these red flags, when you see these signs, when you do see this type of thing trending? My personal advice is nip it in the bud as soon as possible. Now I get it. I get it. If this happens once or twice, it's understandable. Sometimes people have their days. Sometimes things happen and they think about what's going on in their lives. They want to share that with you. They want to tell you all about it. And they may forget to ask about you or put you first or acknowledge you. This will happen once in a while, depending on what's going on in people's lives. But if this is consistent, 
If you're literally seeing these signs every single day, maybe multiple times a day, and you realize that you're getting the short end of the stick, <laughs> it's time to see it for what it really is. It's either you let them know, like pull them to the side and say, hey, look, I noticed this and I noticed that. Like something going on. So this is where they can change it. Or they're going to snap back and say, "Uh, uh-uh, I'm not changing it. I'm not doing anything wrong. It's you. I'm not the problem. And this is where you make that decision. Do I want to continue my friendship with this person? Do I want to continue my relationship with this person? If they're going to keep doing this to me, do I really need this person in my life? Are they adding value to it? What am I really getting out of all this? Is it a two-way street? Because if it's not, what's really the point of being with this person? What's really the point of spending time with this person? Are they helping you grow? Or are you just helping them grow? Are they helping you succeed? Or are they succeeding because of you? Once you have your answer, I'm not gonna lie to you, you may not like your answer. Because at one point you thought this person was nice. They were cool. They were chilled. You thought you were building something. Then you really find out that they only keep you around when it benefits them. And let me tell you, those people aren't it. Those aren't the people that need to be in your life. Those aren't the people that you could rely on. That when you have an emergency, you could call. That when your heart is broken, you could reach out to. That when you need help, they'll be there. Because they won't. So instead of continuing to try and hold on to this relationship or friendship that's been dead forever... Let them go to make room for the people that belong in your life. Let them go because you deserve more. Let them go because you're not anybody's doormat. And you literally deserve the best. So guys, I hope you all enjoyed this video. As always, let me know your thoughts. I wanted to make this video for that group of people that just happen to be surrounded by the wrong set of people. Okay, so I hope this all helped. As always, guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments. If there's a video you guys want me to make, let me know as well. I'll be more than happy to make it for you guys. Make sure you guys are liking, subscribing, sharing my content with all of your friends and family, as I always tell you, because I love making it for you. And you guys, I will see you guys in my next video, okay? Take care. Bye.